did you link with Do Do Sean to start the cardio boom? Uh, I I linked with um Do Sean when I got to Summer Hill. I was scared to move to Summer Hill, man. Then he had killed like somebody I knew. <laughs> I was like. We moving up, I'm like, we finna move to Summer Hill? I said, not Summer Hill. And she was like, yeah, <laughs> baby, that's the only place. We had just got out of Section 8 Bosch, so this was our first house. You feel me? We had never seen carpet in no, you feel me? Like, it wasn't ours. You feel what I'm saying? Like, no, 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 we, had hard, we had hard floor. We had hard, hard floor. Like, man, we ran a pathway in the goddamn carpet. Like, you know, like, <laughs> a goddamn cut by bank or something. But um, it was our first voucher, you know what I mean? Um, it was the first house we had seen. It was a bit different. You feel me? We moved over there. You know what I mean? I had a lot of hoes when I was young. So when I got over there, all the hoes I, I knew and shit were messing with all the niggas with money and all that. So they were like, but we got all the hoes. I'm like, no, y'all don't. <laughs> <laughs> I got the hoes I, I, I done had. You feel me? So when I got over there, it was pretty It was pretty cool. It was different for me. And um, it was this girl named Kiana. She, was, she, said she had money too. She was a hustler too. And she kept saying, you look like my brother. You know what I'm saying? I was like, what do you mean? Like, dark skin, hair full of waves. And like, man, he look just like my brother. Y'all act alike. Y'all talk alike. You feel me? When I saw him, I was like, that nigga do kind of look like me. And then, like, when folks used to think we were seriously real blood brothers. You know what I mean? So when I, I met him, man, we, we, we took a like in the Cartier glasses. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, used to get your ass killed back then. Back then. It yeah. was on some Detroit shit. Yeah. You know what I'm it wasn't nothing but the real ones back then. Man, nothing but the real ones. They wouldn't even really know where to be really found like that. We call them Yays. Yays, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So goddamn, when uh me and me when me and those used to we kept them on as young niggas and goddamn, man, we was we got out, I think we was on Hey Good Air, man. And he was like, Man, they started the Cartier boy shit and you know we Came up with that, that name, and then nigga, we shook hands over the car, CB for life, you know what I'm saying? And and to this day, that's exactly who we are, you know what I mean? Regardless of whatever the fuck happened, you know what I'm saying? So I met Doe over there, and it was just like, when we went in the studio, bro, we were kicking them motherfuckers out so fast. He got them, you know, Doe had did a little time. I had never been to prison or nothing like that, but when home got out, man, home, you know, home spoke Arabic and shit. I had never had a home by that. Pray like that, you know what I mean? He taught me how to pray in a different way, you know, and gave me gave me the game as far as like keep how to how to keep my keep myself up, you know, because that prison had me different, you know what I mean? She, we was like five days saying how I feel, you feel me? Shout out got there get out. We just started kicking that fresh shit, performing at the bounce and shit. We got down and I introduced him to Rocco and then Rocco got behind us, you know what I mean? You know. That's and then this by the time that we end up coming up doing mm -hmm. it, um, yep. on our album at Rocco shit. Yep. Rocco, Rock, when I was, um, I had went through a couple of people like Dank. I used to be dollar for dollar. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Me and Dank went together. Like Dank had, I had a song with Bunt B back then, but I ain't had no deal in it. I had a song with Bunt B um, with me and that, that Dank had got. And then next thing you know, I got, I got with Rock. You know what I mean? When I got Rock, it kind of like went up. Rock had me on one with Juvenile, Monica, Mia X, Bone Crusher, uh, Jazzy Faye. You feel me? I had all this shit like before I had a deal though. You know what I mean? And um, it was, I liked it. You know, Rocco gave me like $20,000. He bought my shit from Raheem. Yeah. <laughs> he got gave me a dub. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. like, give me 10 more thousand. I'm like, what? We had him. He was like, he told me, he was like, bro, I don't really have to. I don't have to work nothing no more. I'm straight. He said, but goddamn, he stopped. He stopped hustling and stuff like that. And like shit, I'm just put the studio, build a studio for you. And I started living at the studio. Yeah, I started living at the studio. That's why I stayed at. You know what I mean? I was out of the house. I was good. And after I had blew all that money, <laughs> I think I, he used to give me like two thousand dollars a week. You know what I mean? He was a real, real good. Oh, guy. No, that's good. I mean, all these bitches, you know, us, you, Monica, mm -hmm. you know. It like early 2000, like yeah. 2004, yeah. like 2004, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Nah, that shit, that shit would be grind time. Yeah. So then, boom, after your deal with um, Cartier Boys, mm -hmm. kind of for a, minute, a, a little moment of parent, I seen you a lot, but I never really heard any more music. What was going on with your music shit in between them times? Uh, what, what drugs had let me back to jail, like 10 months, 
And that's when like Monica, Monica helped me out down there on Stonewall Till in the boot camp, the medical boot camp. Cause I really couldn't go to regular boot camp cause I had been shot. You know, I got like in, internal stitches and shit in my, like, you know what I mean? So they sent me to medical boot camp for like, they gave me, they gave me a year with um, Big Perry, rest in peace to uh, the guy who, uh, who was over the jail. I kept telling him, I was like, man, I'm gonna be somebody when I get out of here, man. He was like, man, I hear that shit all the time. I was like, man, Monica, my sister, bro. And he was like, he was like, real? I was like, yeah, I said 106 Park coming on tonight, man. Night one turn that motherfucker on. I had the whole dorm in there. And she was on that motherfucker. She was like, man, my brother, my brother drove locked up and free my brother. But I mean, went crazy. And he was like, oh, he was like, get her to come down here. I'll, I'll take a couple months off. She came down there to the jail, bro, and they took like three months off my shit. Too hard. Yeah, that shit was dope. Too hard. Shout out to Mark. Shout Too out real. To Mark. Appreciate that. Mark really shit. fuck. I ain't lying. Yeah, I fuck with him. And that shit was like, that's she. She really was like on some belief shit. We 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 had a song too called "You Deserve." It was a pop cover. You know what I'm saying? It was a uh, Hail Mary, but goddamn me and Monica did this song called "You Deserve" that you know Jermaine Dupree produced. You know what I mean? All this stuff was happening for me when I was just trying to get straight. You know what I mean? And then one day, uh, Tip came to the well, Tip, I took Rocco to the studio out at Matt Bonin, uh, KBJ's out at Matt Bonin on Auntie Spot, where we used to record it, where we did Where You From, who, you know what I mean? Um, that's what, that was on the PSN street that um, we used to do. You feel me? Um, and Rocco, you know, I was telling Rocco, man, I've been on Shauna since, you know, for you know, a long time. Got to come out here and meet my boy. But Tilt was right here at Brian, Brian Glenn, you know what I mean, on Kemerson. You know what I mean? He just out here hustling and got them. I took Rocco out there. Rocco was in a 500 being AMG motherfucker with the broadest kick on him all. Tilt looking at him. He was like, man, who is that? Man, who that young man? Y'all need to have a red paper. They're my boy. They don't sign to. Tilt was like, shit. Man, they met too, like they rock man and got that. So that's the first time they met. The first time so you introduced Rock on too. I did. Big shit. Yeah. So they after they met, that was that. So me and Rocco continue on. We was we was putting out stuff. So Rocco pressed up like thirty thousand dollars worth of CDs. Oh yeah, Rocco got the T C D tiles in the back, the motherfucker work upon them. Yeah, but the, he forgot to put the barcode on it. And we couldn't do this wow. mom and pop thing. You feel me? So that was like we were just selling the motherfuckers ourselves and we really couldn't reap the benefit of saying what yeah, it was. The numbers, couldn't read the yeah, numbers. Couldn't read the numbers. So one day, Rock put me on uh, Dig It the Dish It. But I hadn't already been on the radio. And I think they dished it. You know what I mean? That shit broke my heart. Then he, he told me something, like, to the degree where, like, you know, maybe you need to just probably try to work it out. This ain't it right now. You know what I mean? And I, I, took, I took that very, I'm like, well, my nigga. I got, I'm still gonna do my thing. Like, I ain't gonna just let this kill me. So, um, Tilt walked in the studio one day, asked Rocco, man, how much you want for Shawnee? I guess Rocco told him some kind of crazy ass number. Tilt just bust out laughing and walked out of there. But by the time he did that, but Tilt came to buy me, though, from Rocco's studio. And, you know, they told me, like, yeah, go get out. Let me talk to Shawnee. Like, the fuck, I gotta get out, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was some business, you know what I mean? But, um, like, too, like, I got to have him over here with me, man. Got them so and so and so and so. And, you know, everything wasn't really working out over there with Rob, like, because he really didn't know the business like that. And Shawty had an idea. And pretty much he knew that, how, how to get me on. So, eventually, uh, after I left Rock, you know, on some player shit, you know, there wasn't no, wasn't no hard feelings or nothing like that. You know what I mean? He had them ran his course. We were together for, like, eight years. Yeah, it dissolved. Some shit just dissolved. Yeah, but we still like brothers, you know what I'm saying? We still are. And uh, I end up over there with two. You know what I mean? And that shit happened. Okay, let me, let's get into this part about the interview, because this, this part right here is fucking me up right now. Mm -hmm. All right? You say that you are now drug free. Yeah. You've been, like, you've been doing this shit. You spent some time now, some months and shit. Yeah. You've been at it. Mm -hmm. That's good shit with me knowing you and knowing where we come from. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I used to geek, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And you used to geek because we used to yeah. be in the geek spots. Like, nigga, if you're in this motherfucking spot right here, nigga, you geeking. 
When you get it or you wait for a bitch, mm -hmm. that's it. Or you serve it. One eight, that's it, nigga. Yeah. What the reason you got up there in the yard and it's 8 o'clock in the morning? Tell you. What are you doing here, dog? You got to be feeling like we feeling, nigga. You know what I'm saying? It's me, your motherfucking And the reason I said that before I said it because I usually smoke every interview. I ain't gonna smoke because I'm respecting that. And I think that's a big step. I appreciate Especially that. Especially for people who watching, you might motivate people to be like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna file a call, call 32. I'm gonna step back. I'm gonna stop doing this. Because when you told me this shit, it blew my mind. I had to ask you four times in a row. Yeah, yeah. Y'all see that, what, bro? So, that's what I'm weird, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, is that key, no more? Mm -hmm. What? Hold on. You know what I'm saying? So, I think that that's some big shit of for itself. So I just wanted to say that, you know what I'm saying, for everybody watching, that my dog is clean. You know what I'm saying? Now like, you look different. I do. You know what I'm saying? Now you look different. You know what I'm saying? It ain't bad. It ain't like you look different bad, but oh, okay. you can chat with just tail. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like a, I don't know how to call it, you can just see, especially when you know a nigga. You yeah. know what I'm saying? When a nigga get geek cut. I don't really do nothing. I smoke weed. I, I don't think I'm going to help build a stop smoking. I can't. I just, you know. <laughs> Hey, you know, know. That's your preference. You know, it ain't. It's not a bad thing for it. You know, but I had. I just it ran its course with me. You know what I mean? Um, it, it was a very pivotal point in my in my life that made me want to see different. I kept getting the same results. You know, being being successful, having songs that chart. You feel me? And I'm not. I'm talking like six and five. You know what I mean? And I knew the. Uh, Cap I was capable of doing better, but once you mix in the drugs and and then you, I mean, I know God like really good, so you know I mean, I'm kind of like I got I got common sense, and once you grow up and start having knowledge about things, you, I can't live like a young nigga live no more. A young nigga can get forgiven because he really don't know. No, no. Yeah. And once you get older, you start to know things and you're held accountable for things, and I just don't see getting different results, doing the same things. So it's like, it's it's taking time, but I don't give a damn. It, like, it feel good. The time I'm taking, it feels good. You know, I'm, I see things different. I don't, it's not like, I don't I don't be in spots I'm supposed to be in like that. If if I'm somewhere, I'm, it's necessary that I be there. People, places, and things is like, that's some serious shit. And like, what you did is the type of people that they tell me to be around. It do do people really care about your sobriety? Do they love you enough to respect the area and the space? You just demonstrated they're not appreciated. No, no, I didn't.